Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. Welcome back to Pro Cycling Manager 2019 Stage Racer, episode number 63. Little evolution of interest after a strong showing at Liège, Bastogne Liège. But now we head into the Giro d'Italia. It's stage number one. We're just kicking off. It's our first Grand Tour of the year, and we open with pretty much a prologue. No fitness peak. In fact, our fitness peak just ended. So we are not entering the Giro with a fitness peak. And so we are going to be just absolute what we are. We do have, of course, a 98% fitness record. So on that part, we'll gain a little bit of a boost. But otherwise, it's all shrew, folks. We head into this. We've got Fabio Jakobsen. So we are set for a sprint duel. We've got GC and sprint going on. Killen. Uh, I'm going to be killing myself over having him with us. Esgetch supporting the sprint. Nozolo supporting the sprint. Schultz will be working for me. Scottson is doing nothing. And Matteo Trentin in the sprint. So I have a single support rider in Nick Schultz. And uh, that's not very good. So low expectations for the race but we'll do what we can to be at, at least top 10 maybe top 5 only one rider has gotten this stage right so far that's Primo Roglic he had a half a minute lead over everybody and it was super tight behind him Avenipol, Hausen had both just inched closer and then Bilbao had just gone right before I started recording this one so Bill Bow cuts in there Ulysses now cuts in there and we set off to see what we can do now as we go into this you're gonna quickly see uh, well first off 77 today so that's nice resistance is 78 so we could and should put in a pretty decent time you can hear the wind howling and it's come down a bit it was at 44 kilometers an hour we're about to turn into this massive headwind you also finish on this massive headwind so we'll see as we're rolling out of 77 uh, how we're doing on that front and it looks like we're hanging in there just about level Now we're going to get a little tailwind through here, so I'm going to speed up, see if we can get it. You see how we turn out of that corner and accelerate. See if we picked up some time on that one. Uh, 21st, 12 seconds down at the time check, but we do have just that little bit of energy to spare. We're going to stay at the 79, push towards the end. Stefan Kuhn comes in within 7 seconds to Mulan's 14 seconds down. Now we're wearing the 21 jersey, so we're pretty close to nailing this one. So, nope, nope, uh, this wind, this wind is really hurting. Okay, back down to a 78. There we go. Final corner, final corner. Attack, attack. There you go, seventh. 21 seconds down. Okay, not bad considering it was all prologue and not really any time trial. Uh, uh, it was a couple percentage. I guess maybe 10%, 15% time trial without doing the math in my head. But that is 8th. We finish 8th. That's good. Roglic does take the stage. And that is a top 10. That's actually right where I was on the list. I was about ninth on the stage favorites. The team gave me a respectable request in a top 15. So I'm hoping they're going to kind of follow that pattern through this race if they're just looking for a GC top 15 top 10 ish then we should be pretty good or if, even if they come in with no expectations then stage by stage there might be a few stages big climbing stages where they look for me to do something maybe a few hills stages where they look for me to do something but I think if the team comes in with low expectations then takes pressure off and then we could just give whatever we can give and take whatever we can take out of this race. Young rider classification, I was the quickest. A couple seconds on Bennert, a few seconds on Evenepoel. They look to be the only ones here in the top 10 that I will be competing against 
for that under 25s jersey so maybe that is going to be our target for this race is claiming the under 25s and then just getting a decent gc position uh, i feel like i could compete for the gc if i had a stronger team but not only is the team we brought to this race not built for it, but this team, Mitchelton Scott, right, after all those climbers lost at the end of the season before I joined in, they're just not built for GC. So I don't think I'm going to go into any of the three Grand Tours this season with expectations of winning. I think I'm going to have to wait till next year, especially if I do move on to a team like Ineos, which I know, yes, yes, I know. I know, not a popular choice, but we've got to admit that moving to a team like that will give me a real shot of winning one, two, or all three Grand Tours. Okay, we pick up 18 points, that's good. We'll see what we can do for some early advances. So stage two is Arnhem to Niemegen, and it is totally flat. Niemegen back to Arnhem for stage three. Stage four, just a little bit punchy. There won't be much to it, and so we're going to go with that. Um, I'm surprised that we're all the way in the Dutch lowlands to open the Giro d'Italia for this 2022 year, but okay. Uh, stage five, wow. Nothing much until stage six, and even that isn't looking like it's going to do that much damage to the field, but it'll certainly leave some riders behind. Pretty easy start to this race before the time trial on stage nine is going to open this up. And then ten will open it further 13, that one will definitely have some time splits, those steep climbs close to the end. Uh, again, here on 14. Ooh, another time trial on 15, and it's all mountain 10K. Nice. 16, nothing on 17. 18's pretty straightforward, that little punchy one right before the end. And, of course, the climb before it will thin things out. 19, that's a big one. And 20. So this is really going to come down to those last two stages, or could come down to those last two stages. Uh, but it looks like we've got a couple stages off before we jump into stage number four, and there won't be much to see on that one, but I'll see you near the end of the fourth stage. The basic bonus for having good fitness, otherwise a zero race day condition is all that we have. It does give us a plus two to our mountains and hills, resistance and stamina meaning I should have no problem getting to the end of this stage. The big question is who else will be around at the finish. We have two decent categorized climbs and then we have a little quad set of climbs at the end of the stage. Short, steep, not enough to be categorized before we go into the finish, which makes today Classified as a punchy one. Jens W. Share already out. Wow. Poor guy. Very early in this race. At least he got through two sprint stages, though I don't think he had any sort of result in those two stages. I'm down to ninth overall uh, from eighth. One of the riders who was classified above me has slipped down the order. They lost some time or withdrew. And then a couple riders from behind that weren't that far down overall in the classification. Sprinters. Uh, Viviani is one of them who was did decent enough on that first stage that when added uh, when added to his result on those two stages getting into the podium, the seconds that he gained was enough to boost him above me. So uh, sitting in ninth overall, still in the top ten. Now, objective, nothing, nothing today, but I am full team leader, so I have the entire team at my disposal, but you can see now, as we've gone over these two climbs, the only rider left who could handle these climbs was Nick Schultz. So Nick Schultz is going to have to get water this final time, and then uh, 
come up and support me towards the end. The others could, should recover some, but he's the only one who uh, could handle two Cat 3 climbs. That's pretty rough. 109 left in the peloton. We've got three riders out the back, including Jakobsen. So uh, Jakobsen did have a third or a fourth in the second stage, uh, but I don't expect him to have a bunch of results. As we go over the top here, we're going to be in the flat in the valley for a little bit before we head into those four climbs. There are still three riders ahead, but it's only 50 seconds. There's no time gaps for me to grab right now. Plus, even though there's the three seconds involved, you're still going to have a number of sprinters like Viviani right there. So <clears throat> we're not going to claim that over him right now. In fact, it looks like they're even trying to sprint for it. They're just going for the intermediate points. Still haven't gotten the water. Where is Schultz? Come on, Schultz. You're supposed to have long since finished this. It was like 20 kilom 23 kilometers ago that I sent you back to get water. It was 43k to go when I sent Schultz to get water. And he still has not reached the front of the pack. Jeez. Okay, finally we get water. And that's already the first of the four quad climbs. And now all of a sudden the field is splitting 68 riders left. He needs to uh, do what he's got to finish up and get me to the end. So here's what's left. Two short, steep ones here back to back. Just a little saddle. And then we've got that one last climb, which does get pretty steep, but it's very short. We need to make sure we stay near the front through this. This is the first of the, the double climbs. One rider off the front. Roglic attacking? Lopez attacking? Really? Okay, second climb. Let's use Schultz up a little bit here to return to the front. Who is it that's 14 seconds away? Is that Bernal? Is that Bernal off? No, Higita. Higita off the front. All right. 10k to go in the stage. Move to the front because we're going to go into this final climb and this is where we're going to make some sort of move to get small group off off the front. Here it is. This climb features some dreadful percentages. All right. Separation. Group of five. Solo for now. 7k to go. We're just doing the hill speed to get over the top of this, and the top is right here. Red bar is going to run out. Ooh, not quite to the top. 20 seconds. It's okay, we have the yellow bar. Keep on pedaling. 21 seconds. The finish line is getting close. The we will go into arrow. Three and a half K to go. We have the yellow bar. Two K to go. 28 seconds. One and a half. 30 seconds. One K to go. Sprint it out. Come on now. Come on now. Yes. Get there. Get there. Get in there. For the win. 17 seconds clear. Gustavo, Moscon, Falgren, Hagita, Carapaz, Mohoric, Lopez, Roglic, and Moss, top 10. Little, little bit of a gap to a second group. Schultz's group is definitely well behind, more than two minutes down. At the very least, I gained 10 seconds. I should have a 17 second gap. With 27 seconds, I could have the race leader's jersey. And like I said, I have no expectations to win this race without the team support. But this is a damn good start to the race. And if I can hang on to the jersey for a little while, that's super prestige points. 
But let's see if they actually gave the time gap. They certainly should have. That was more than half a minute clear through those final 10 kilometers. It's classified as a hill stage, not as a sprint stage. And it finished 17 seconds clear. That is more than enough gap to be given a time gap. And then you could also see between this group and the chase group, they should have a time gap as well, but we'll see if that's actually given. Because there's another 15 seconds or so from the back end here to that next group. Time gap, time gap. <laughs> Half a flippin' minute, over a quarter of a minute at the finish. F you, game. F you. I hate how you do that. It was a Hills classified stage, and there was a significant gap. And I created separation with 10k to go, so it's not like it was right at the last moment. So the chase group gets the same time as me. The next group at least is given a time gap. And then the group behind them that was well behind, yes. And then again, so there are time gaps, but oh no, I don't get a time gap. The clear winner by quite some margin. That was the clearest of all the group differentials was that I was well ahead of everyone. Screw you, game. Screw you. So Roglic hangs on to the leader's jersey. I move into second place, 12 seconds down, and, and that's okay. I suppose uh, the, you know the 17 seconds would have been enough. I would have the race lead by 5 seconds. And again, just having the jersey comes with all sorts of bonuses, primarily to your points. And... That is what we're going for, especially since I don't think I'm going to be in any sort of true contention for this race win. I just don't have a strong enough team around me. Jamulon, Roglic, they have the support. Bennert, Lopez, that's probably your top four. After that, fighting for a top five, I think I could beat Thomas there, even with movie star support. But we're looking at Enrique Moss supporting Roglic. Yeah, he's going to be tough to beat. Moss Gun and others supporting Bennert. Tough to beat. Valgren supporting Dumoulin. Tough to beat. Especially when you include how OP his mountain rating is and then how truly accurate his time trial rating is. So, yeah, we just got screwed out of 17 seconds, definitely. Fourth in the points classification, still leading the under 25s, but only by two seconds. Well, I suppose that's back into that lead, because Del Mar, uh, Ernesto Del Mar Gustavo had moved ahead of me from the uh, sprints. Let's see, the team's already down to 16th. Well, that was the least satisfying win I've had in a long time. Stage 6 opens in the rain. I do have leader Jakobsen fighting for points classification, but otherwise I have full team support and I do have Jakobsen support except for at sprint points. If I were him, I would go into the breakaway and try to get points that way, because otherwise he's not going to accumulate any today. Stefan Kuhn quickly away. But here we are, two climbs. At kilometer 54, the Boca de la Selva, and then at the end... Rakarasso, or however you pronounce those, sorry if I'm butchering them. But there you go, final climb, just 
a 4.7% average gradient, but it is 16 kilometers in length. Axes out at 10%. That should be a relatively easy climb to do. But pace is certainly a thing. It's going to do its thing. And it won't necessarily make life easy. We are going to speed things up for a while. Let this break form. There are already 15 riders away. Now 16 riders away. Uh, 17, 18, 19. Too many riders are going away. These extra nine not helping. Conchi in the break. Must be going for the... KOM for this race. 24 in total have gone away. I'm not a fan of these extra 9. 15 is not bad. 24 is pretty freaking awful for just stage 6 of the race. And time gaps still being short, meaning we can't have the breakaway taking the stage today. And apparently I'm not the only one feeling that way, as everybody is a little bit fatigued. Uh... We just caught the entire break, pulled it back in, but there was also something that happened behind us in this chase, and it split the field. Comes back together with 10 riders away. That is so much better. And they quickly have a three minute gap. Here are the 10 riders, Ravasi, Frank, Frankini, and Barta. Not really any threats in there. Frank, Frankini, Barta, but Barta is more punchy. Uh, I think Matthias Frank might be the best chance of staying away, but I doubt that they will. Now that chase, ooh, Demulon with the puncture. He's gonna go backwards. Doesn't even go out the back. He gets a spare tire before he even goes out the back of the field. And we're not stretched out very far at all, but we're going uphill. And he was right at the front. And that's why I always ride at the front. Five minute gap to those ten riders, but we're going to hit the top of this climb, hopefully with a full team intact. Looks like we might. Uh, Mezgech successfully gets water before the top. Front riders attacking each other for the KOM points. 1K from the top, and we go over the top. Six and a half minute gap. Now, we're going to have to start that chase here pretty soon to start pulling those guys back. Looks like we got just a hint of snow right there at the highest peak, but otherwise it's just been raining. This descent could be dangerous for that. I've already recovered. Schultz, Scottson have already recovered. Trentine. You can see some of the riders are definitely slower to recover, so it means we are going downhill at a pretty good pace. The rain does stop, it subsides, no crashes surprisingly, and it's now down to a six minute gap as we reach the valley floor. Speed things up for a while. Riders should fully recover now. We've got a, a couple little itty bitty climbs before we go into kind of our first significant rise. It's gonna level off for a little while before hitting the actual categorized final climb of the stage. And that's where things will really intensify and begin to spread themselves out. We're already seeing a couple snowflakes mixed into this rain, even though we're not quite at the altitude we were previously. Those 10 riders down to three and a half minutes, so we've already pulled back a bit of time. Killen going to get water. That's all he's good for. Not even sure he's going to make it now, is he? Nope. He dropped right out the back without getting anyone any water. Jakobsen right out the back. I told you this part, even though it's not categorized, this was going to do some damage. And look how tired I am. I mean, all we've done is pull back 40 seconds on the front, but the peloton has split in half. Split in half, just like that. Half the field is gone. I am half fatigued. That is going to do a lot of damage. Uh, a lot of damage. <clears throat> Nizolo, come on, grab some water. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Oh, taking too long. Ah, oh, Nizolo. He's not going to make it back in time. He is not going to make it back in time. 
Come on, Nizolo. Make an effort here. There you go. Pedal. Pedal. He's not going to make it. Nope. We're already going up, and he has not made it here yet, and he's out. Oh, come on. Uh, no, he's going to go back too fast. He didn't make it. And Trentine's gone too, so I'm going to be riding solo. No water. 14k to go. Peloton already shrinking further. 62 riders. It's still a 2 minute, 25 second gap. And there is some serious fatigue in this field. This is going to blow times up significantly. It's going to level off for a little while. So this is the first of, oh, I guess you'd say three sections. It's the longest of the three sections. It's half the climbing we have to do. Back off. Luckily, there's not too much pace in this chase. It's down to 50. Stay off the left side of the road. I need to know what's going on. Okay, here's the flat section. Just about, anyway, through this town. And we are quite tired and quite thirsty. And it's 10k to go. We're down to 40 riders in the peloton. And I'm looking to be in a bit of trouble here. Let me use my gel for this second section. I think I might lose on this third section a bit without team support of any kind. Without the water, I'm, I'm in trouble. And I'm not going to the back to get the water myself. Flat section, zero recovery. Even though I'm down to a 141. <laughs> I got to a 141, but ended up with no no resistance recovery at all. Here comes the first acceleration. It's Lopez, Hagita, Thomas, Chacone, and I'm not chasing. No, sir, I am not chasing today. Oh, gosh, I have to. Look at this. This is like 15 riders going away. Oh, wait, where's the acceleration? Come on. Come on, gamer. Let's go. Okay, we're back in. Back in. One rider away. It's Lopez. And we're just hanging on here. It's 24 now. Chasing one. Micah. He can go off and have the stage. We're almost there. 2.5. Into the snow. Right at the back, though. I am right at the back. 1K to go. I'm going to lose a little time today. I could have been a contender. But no. Not today. Not with this crap. Not with this crap team. Oh my goodness. They couldn't even get me freaking water and it doesn't matter now it's too late for one Lopez takes the stage Roglic second Moss to Mulan Bennett there's all the top competitors one two three four five and we get dropped Gegenhart Micah Carapaz Thomas Martinez Haig Chaconi I'm gonna get the same time as this group Stam Carboni Still in the top 20, but I lose a minute 20. We're waiting for the back markers who appear to be fairly numerous in this difficult race. It ain't nothing but a thing. We're definitely going down the order after that one. And that was zero protection. Everybody was dropped here but two guys. And then those two guys couldn't hang with, couldn't get water. So I had zero recovery from here to here. And so it was solo. That whole climb. And because it was solo, no protection was just barely short of what I needed. I got all the way to the final climb, the final one and a half K. 
all alone. All alone, without any help, without any support, but can't win this race. Cannot win these climbs with zero team support. So we take 17th, we go a minute 24, Stam even goes clear, and we don't even get same time as him, which is ridiculous compared to the last stage where I go and win well off into the distance, all, all far, far, far away alone. He's only 10 seconds ahead of us that he only takes in the final 100 meters. But he gets that time gap. Okay, it's a mountain stage. Fine, fine, whatever. I'm done. No complaining. Nope, nope. Except for I did, didn't I? Roglic, 25 seconds clear in the race. Lee Lopez is second. To move on third. Moss, Bennert, Micah, Thomas, Carapaz, all within a minute. Gegenhart, Haig, Ciccone, I am in 12th place. Just two seconds out of 11th. That was horrendous. We dropped 10 places. Minute 42 behind. There's only a handful of climbing stages. It's time trial coming up that I can gain back some time on. I don't have support for these stages. That drops me to third in the under 25 stam. Really? Man, oh man. Bennett's going to be hard to beat for that under 25s. He is definitely going to be hard to beat for that under 25s. Team's still 16th, but. 18 minutes behind, so I'm very much going to be a one-man show for this team. And that is why, rightfully so, this team has realistic expectations. I'm the leader, but there is no expectation on a placement for me. A stage like that had no expectation. A result would have paid. Points accumulate. I level up. I get better. But it's up to me to get those results. Stage 7. Another sprint stage. We're a third of the way into this race already. Flat stages will do that to you. Jakobsen only manages 10th. Trentin Nazolo behind him. With that kind of support, if they were actually working together, if it was an actual lead out, Jakobsen should finish up higher. Still in 12th. And that is stage eight upcoming. This climb's not going to do much. This climb will hurt. There will not be too many riders left, but I would expect 30 to 40 at the end, maybe even 50, and then a time trial. But with the race a third of the way done, that is going to do it for this episode. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Thanks for tuning in. We can bypass that like button. It's okay. I understand. I was disappointed, by the way. That stage that we just won that was so disappointing, that last stage, that was the 50th. Maybe that's where a like button could be uh, clicked. 50 career wins. There was, th there was a little bit, just a little ray of sun shining through the clouds in this episode. I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Bye for now.